I'm just back from a long trip around the world, um, and a, I was in a dozen refugee camps, and uh, delighted to be bringing these stoves to the places where they're needed the most. Um, and, and it's working. I'm expecting by the end of this year to see some serious orders for large numbers of stoves. And we're moving forward on about four initiatives around the world to bring factories into production uh, in the developing world. But our experience so far is the stoves are durable, they're safe, the users love them, the cooks love these stoves. Again in Nigeria after a year the cook said, I said, I, I kept pumping for problems. What, what kind of problems have you encountered? They said, no problems, no problems. And finally she said, well, a bigger stove would be nice. <laughs> and everywhere I went, that was, that was also common. Uh, every place in the world where they're doing institutional cooking, they need bigger stoves than 60 liters. And we thought we had a... That stove looked really big to us until we got these 100 liter pots and made this 100 liter stove. I think we'll probably stop there. I don't think we need to go bigger than 100 liter. Uh, yesterday we boiled 60 liters of water in 26 minutes using 2.3 kilos of wood. And then the simmer phase in that big stove, we would go 45 minutes with uh, 200 grams of fuel, which is almost nothing. Right? So once you're to boil in these stoves, it just, they just keep on chugging, and it hardly takes anything. The, the trick is to not let the fire go completely out. But the last 20 minutes of cooking, you can let the fire go out. There's still enough retained heat to keep cooking for, for 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, the autoclave, um, this was Damon's vision and dream uh, that we would uh, have an autoclave that fits a stove. Um, we found one in a catalog that looked close. We thought, well, we'll make an adapter ring. We'll make it fit our stove. We ordered the autoclave and it got here and got it out of the box and put it in the stove. And it fits actually better than our pot, um, <laughs> just right out of the box. So Jordan's been developing a relationship with the manufacturer in uh, in Wisconsin who makes these autoclaves. They're promoting our stoves now. We're promoting their autoclaves and selling the ensemble. And they're, they're thrilled and so are we. So, um, and what I've come to see uh, in the last year is, is even more valuable than sterilizing hospital instruments is sterilizing uh, medical waste. Right? In most places, it's going into the waste stream. Um, you know, it's a huge disease vector um, in some places they incinerate it, like in 55 gallon drums, they use a huge amount of wood to incinerate it. A lot of that's hard plastics, you're getting dioxin, blah, blah, blah. They can, we can run a sterilization cycle uh, with about 800 grams of fuel. Um, it's, it takes about a half an hour. This is a pretty big capacity autoclave, I ho hope you've all seen it. Um, and I'm, I'm imagining them behind, ho behind hospitals in urban areas, um, just, just cranking out, just uh, sterilizing the waste as fast as they generate it. I was in, one, in, in Otash camp, uh, my driver got lost, and we're just out, on, we're weaving through these little tiny streets that are just barely wider than the, than the truck we're in, and we're totally lost. So he stops and he gets up and he climbs up on the roof of the truck so he has a signal for his cell phone to try and figure out where we are and to look around. And this little gaggle of kids, boys, maybe four to eight years old, came up to me. And there were about six of them. And they started uh, talking to me, sort of. And I realized they were all stone deaf, all these little boys. And they had made this little cohort group, and they were all stone deaf. They obviously weren't going to school. They were just you know, desperately poor. They looked malnourished. They were dressed in rags. And they came up with big smiles to shake my hand. Uh, I, the, the indomitability of the human spirit just makes this all so important and so worthwhile and, and so humbling for us. The clients, no, never forget the clients.